It's a big stretch of games coming up for us. Obviously, it starts with a home game. We got two tough road games, but Florida's playing their best basketball of the year right now. Big win over Tennessee, and then they play Kentucky down the wire at Kentucky. So we've got to play better than we did Saturday. We obviously got to do a good job with Castleton. I mean, he's one of the best players in the league. You know, he leads their team in all major statistical categories. He anchors their defense. They got the 10th best defense in the country on Ken Palm. So our offense is going to get tested, but. I think we've had two good days of practice. We're getting good production from our bench. You know, this, this is going to be a big test for us, though. So it's a big, big home game for us coming down the wire. We don't, we don't have that many more home games left, so hopefully we can get the crowd to come out. Student sectionals will be packed because we don't have too many more left here in Coleman after this one. Questions? Thanks. Coach, you said it all season, but what does it mean when Florida beats Tennessee that no wins are easy in the SEC? Yeah, I mean, there's there's really no easy wins. I mean, you look at you know some of the bottom teams in the league. I mean, LSU is at the bottom of the league. They gave us everything we could handle on the road there Saturday. South Carolina goes into Kentucky, wins at Rupp. So there's just it's a good league. Every team's got really good players. Florida's a very good team that's getting better and better. They got a new coach, they got a new system that, you know, took them a little longer to kind of, I'm sure, learn the system they want to put in, but they know what they're doing over there and they got players and they're playing their best basketball right now. So this, this is not going to be an easy win at all. James. Hey, uh, Noah said that Castleton ranks up there with some of the best bigs in the country. You know, you guys have faced Sheboy, you guys have faced Drew Timmy. You know, how do you see him compare with those guys and, and kind of what, what's the strategy of playing bigs that are good up offensively? Yeah, I mean, you know, we obviously look at Ken Palm here and there. He's got like National Player of the Year rankings. I think Collins in the top 10 on that. So, you know, last week, if you look what he did last week, he averaged, I think, 23 and 9. Uh, he's a big that's skilled, scores with his back to the basket, can face the basket, can drive you can pass the ball well, leads him in assists, I believe. So, I mean, Charles has to do a good job. He, he's different than like a Sheboy. You know, Charles has a lot of size on like Sheboy. Charles doesn't have a lot of size on Colin. Collins. probably the same size Charles is. I mean, he's big, long, tall, athletic. So, I mean, he, he kind of gives a different dimension. So it's not like Charles' length is going to bother Colin all that much. So, you know, we're going to, Obviously, Charles will be our first matchup on him. You know, we're going to have to have other options. Charles has been in foul trouble in the past. You know, I'm not sure that too many of our guys guard one-on-one, -on -one, but they also have shooting all over the floor, so that's what makes it difficult. Like, they don't make it easy to double them because you don't want to give up open threes to these shooters that they've got on the floor, you know. So, I, I mean, it's going to be a tough cover. Our guards are going to have to put a little pressure on the ball. We're going to have to make it difficult to give him the ball where he wants it. You know, they, they've got good counters to when you try to take their stuff away. But we, we've, if our intensity is where it needs to be, I think we can make things a little more difficult just in general overall. But yeah, he he's going to cause problems because his length, and I just don't think Charles Wink's going to bother him nearly like Charles Wink has bothered some other bigs that he's done well against. Charlie. You talked about this being at home. You guys are obviously undefeated here. Just is it? Is there more to it than just being in a comfortable place and in front of your home crowds? Or what's maybe led to the success at home? I mean, we, we really we got three losses. Two are neutrals and semi-neutrals. Right. We had one and one was on the road. But we so we we haven't lost at home. I do think our crowd definitely, I mean, it's great for us when that student section's packed and everybody else and they're into it and cheering us on. I also think, I haven't looked at the splits. Maybe you guys have the numbers. You know, we shoot in this gym on a regular basis. Obviously, we value the three ball. We're going to shoot a lot of shots. So we've had some pretty good shooting nights in here. You know, is it our guys being comfortable in the gym? Is it our crowd is it that we're... I don't know. We've been pretty good at home and on the road both. We've only lost one true road game too, but hopefully we continue to win at home. Up, but it's going to get tested here in this one. Hey, 
we just talked to Clowney and Siri, who had both gone through a little bit of a shooting slump, and Noah said that you can't lose confidence. Just how good was it to see both of them have good shooting performances on Saturday? And then how do you encourage guys to keep their confidence up and keep shooting when they're maybe going through a little bit of a slump? Yeah, I think it was big that they both shot it well. They need to see the ball go in. They both work really hard. You know, Ryland's been shooting the ball well, so it's good. Namari, Clowney, you know, I. I don't think you ever tell guys not to shoot the ball. Like that, that to me, that messes with their confidence. You're open, take it. Like, no, make sure we're taking good shots. That that's you know the biggest thing. Let's make sure shots we're taking are quality, open, uncontested shots as much as possible. And then you know, are our feet set? Are we stepping into is a shot that we should be taking? Are we in rhythm? And then after that, it's like are you putting your shots up outside of practice? Are you getting in, getting up shots? If you are, well, every shooter ever played goes through some slumps here and there I don't think getting shy and passing up open shots is the way you come out of the slump so get in the gym put your work in trust your work and shoot the open ones make sure you're taking good shots Tony yeah oh, okay. Charles looked really good off the jump against LSU and then he had that little guy look banged up a little bit how is he doing and then also just how encouraging was it to see him get off to such a fast start yeah I mean we had tried to get his legs back up on you know he's obviously seven foot some of those guys the wear and tear goes a little a little harder on their bodies we rest them in a sense like we caught his reps in practice told him only to shoot free throws outside of practice that was it i thought we got his legs back up under him uh he's fine now i think he's he had two good days of practice he started out great we found him on a couple lobs he was looking a lot more explosive so we need him to be a lot more explosive. Like he's athletic, he's just got to show. He's got to play in a stance more. Be ready to show his athleticism. Use it when he needs to. Whether it's a block shot, catching a lob. I mean, you've seen him get up and down the floor pretty good too. We just need him to play a lot more athletic. You go on Zoom with Mike. It is what have you seen from Jaden Bradley? You know, these past few games, it seems like his minutes and scoring might be down a little bit from where it was. Yeah, I mean, part of that's Amari's playing better. I mean, you remember before uh, Amari went out against Houston, Jade was coming off the bench. So it's just, it's hard to balance minutes with everybody. You know, we need Jade to be an elite level defender. You know, some teams have been playing off him a little bit. And I think sometimes it might muddy up his pick and roll reads. We're trying to get him just to still have an attacking mindset. You know, he's a great passer. I'm trying to put him in better spots to where he can really use his passing ability. You know, and I thought he did a good job. He found Charles on uh, right out of the gate. He's done a good job with that early. You know, we put him in some stuff. We gotta maybe try to go back to some of the early stuff we put him in some of these games. So, look, he, he's had a good couple of days of practice. I think his energy's been up. He's one of those guys we really need to have him be an elite level defender when he's on the floor though to you know continue to get the minutes that he'd been getting before so that, that's what we've been telling him Mason. obviously you mentioned the talent that's in the sec with she way and Hamilton, but with 10 guys on this team that can all be solid rotation players what does it mean that when you practice and when you go against each other that the best time that these guys can face can really even out or could be even out yeah like today our, our second unit we keep track of all the games we have a winner and a loser at the end of the day. Our second unit beat our first unit today, which I didn't even think our first unit was bad. It's just, you know, when you got guys like Quinterly, Amari, Ryland on that second unit, they, they, they're they shooting the ball well. They kind of had it going pretty well. So, you know, if you look, I think over the last five contests, uh, I think our bench is averaging 34 points a game. So when you get that kind of production off your bench, sometimes if you have a tough start to the game, you may get a, a boost. You know, Quinterly come in and get you going. Amari come in and make a couple shots like you did at LSU. You know, Ryan come in and get something going for us like that. So it, it's, it's been good to have production off the bench. It's great to have spirited, competitive practices, especially, you know, we played Saturday. We don't play till Wednesday, so Sunday's off. So we kind of really got after it Monday. It wasn't the day after an off day and it wasn't the day before a game so thought we really got better on Monday and some stuff that we weren't very good at Saturday but we picked two competitive teams that can really get after it and get guys at every spot 
multiple guys at each position that can make each other better. So I think that's part of why we compete so hard in the games usually. Awesome. Yeah, kind of pushing forward here to March. You know, going back to two years ago's team with this one, you know, what are similarities and differences and what do you think maybe this team has to make a deeper run of March than the last one did? Yeah, I mean, our free throw shooting is a lot better. I mean, if you look at that team two years ago, we shot 11 to 25 at the free throw line. I think we were 93% last game at the free throw line. We've had pretty consistent free throw shooting. That, that, that's better. We got multiple options, which as opposed to last year, you know, last year JQ goes down, but we were already thin in the backcourt, really limited us against Notre Dame. We just, if somebody wasn't playing well, we just didn't have any options this year. If somebody's not playing well, we got plenty of options to go to. Um, I mean, we still haven't even seen a, a great version of Don Welch who scored pretty well his entire college career. So if we get him going, just give us another option. So. I think we're deeper. I think we shoot free throws better. We're a much better defensive team this year than last year. Now, defensively, we're similar to two years ago. We were pretty elite on both uh, ends of the floor. We're a little better offensive team this year. So hopefully with the amount of firepower, the depth, the versatility, and then the fact that so if you're kind of comparing, because our first year there was no postseason play. But so if you're comparing the last two years, we're a way better defensive team than last year. I think we got more depth and better free throw shooting team, a little bit better offensively than we were two years ago. Well, obviously, you know, in, in college basketball, teams get judged a lot on how they finish in the NCAA tournament. It's a one game deal. Like, as you see over the course of the college basketball season, any one game, anybody's susceptible to losing, anybody kind of can get a win. So, so to, purely judge a program just on how they do in the NCAA tournament, I think is a little short-sighted. So, you know, I don't want our guys thinking, you know, Final Four, Boston, or anything like that. We just need to play our best basketball in March, and we don't need to put all the extra pressure on us. But I, I do think we had a chance to make a run. You know, when I was at Buffalo, we won three out of the four MAC tournaments up there. I think we were peaking in, at the end of the year in three out of those four years. I think you got to be smart with how hard you push you guys in practice, how all that type of stuff. But you also got to have some some luck goes into it too. I mean, shoot, another team goes on fire. Sometimes, I mean, we didn't play great against Oklahoma, but boy, they, they shot it really well. Like, run up against somebody like that in the tournament, or you just can't make a shot in the tournament. I mean, there's some breaks you need to get to make some of these deep runs that some teams uh, make in the NCAA tournament. Charlie. It, you just kind of briefly mentioned Dom there. I didn't see him play in the last game. Is that something where he's dealing with an issue, or maybe is that more managing minutes like you were talking about a minute ago? I mean, before Lamari was playing great, Ryan was playing good, and you know, I just didn't get a chance to get him in. So, I mean, look, he's been practicing really hard. He's a great kid. He's shown he can play at a high level in college. Like, we're still planning on using him. I thought he played really well these last two days of practice. So, hopefully, we find a spot to get him in there. Good? Awesome. Thank you, Coach.